To set up the game of Biblios, first, place the scriptorium in the center of the playing area. Next, locate the five dice. Place each of these on their matching color on the scriptorium. Adjust each of the die so that three is facing up. Next, set up the deck of cards. The deck will be adjusted based on the number of players in the game. In a two-player game, remove two of each value of gold cards from the game. After doing that, shuffle the deck, then randomly draw 21 cards from the deck. The randomly drawn cards will also be removed from the game. Do not look at the randomly removed cards. In a three-player game, remove one of each value of gold card from the game. Then shuffle the deck and randomly draw 12 cards. The 12 drawn cards will be removed from the game, along with the removed money cards. In a four-player game, shuffle the deck and randomly draw the top seven cards of the deck. These cards will be removed from the game. After the deck has been set up according to the number of players in the game, set the deck near the scriptorium and the game is ready to begin. The game plays out in two phases, the gift phase and the auction phase. The gift phase will be played out in entirety and then the auction phase will occur. To begin, a starting player will be selected and they will start the gift phase. During the gift phase, a player will draw cards one at a time, look at them, and decide where to place them. There are three general locations a card may be placed. One area is in front of them in their player area, and this is a card that they will later take into their hand. Exactly one card must be placed in this area, and it will be placed face down. Another area is the auction pile. This is a card that will be able to be purchased by players later in the game, during phase two. Exactly one card will be placed in this area in each player's turn, and it will be placed face down. As the game goes on, the auction pile will become a large pile of cards. The final area a card may be placed is the public space. This is the area where the active player will place cards that will go into the other player's hands. One card will be placed in this area for each other player in the game. For instance, in a four-player game, three cards will be placed here. All cards in the public space will be placed face up, so all players can see them. As mentioned, the active player will draw one card at a time, look at it, and place it in a location. Cards may not be moved around, so the active player must make a decision on where to place the card immediately after drawing it. After the active player has placed all of the cards they are required to in a location, they will add the card they placed in front of them to their hand. Then all other players in the game will draw one card from the face-up cards in the public space. They will do this in clockwise order, starting with the player to the left of the active player. There is one special type of card in the game, known as a church card. Cards of this type will have a purple number on them. As soon as any player in the game acquires a church card, the game will immediately be put on hold, and the church card's effect will be completed. For instance, if the active player drew a church card and decided to keep it for themselves, they would immediately play the card. After completing the church card, they would continue with their turn. If a player draws a church card and places it in the auction pile, it will be left there until the auction in Phase 2. Whenever a player uses the action of a church card, they are able to adjust a die the amount shown on the church card. There are five different types of church cards in the game. Let's take a look at each card. This card allows a player to move exactly one die in the game up one point. This card allows a player to move exactly one die down one point. This card allows a player to choose to move exactly one die either one point up or one point down. They may only choose one of the two options. This card allows a player to move exactly two dice up one point. A player must use this to move up two dice, or they may not use this card at all. Finally, this church card allows a player to move exactly two dice down one point. Once again, they must follow the same rules as the plus one version of this card, and may only complete the card if they move exactly two dice. After a player completes the effects of their church card, they will discard it to the discard pile. A player may also choose not to use a church card. If they choose not to use it, they will simply discard it. When a player finishes their gift phase, each player in the game should have one more card in their hand, and the auction pile should also have one more card in it. No player should have a church card in their hand. These should all have been resolved. After the active player has completed their gift phase, the player to their left will become the active player and place the cards in the three locations. Players will continue taking turns in the gift phase until the draw pile has been exhausted. When the draw pile runs out, the turn will continue as normal, 
and then the gift phase is over, and players will move into phase two, the auction phase. The auction phase is the second phase of the game. To start the auction phase, the cards placed face down in the auction pile will be shuffled, and then placed back face down. The player who started the game in the gift phase will also start the auction phase. To start, they will grab the auction pile and place it face down in front of them. Then they will draw the top card of the auction pile and place it face up in the middle of the playing area. The card that was placed out will be bid on by players in the game. The player to the left of the player who drew the card will bid first. They must make a bid of one or higher or pass. All players in clockwise order will get a chance to either bid higher than the previous player or pass. If they pass, they are out of the auction for that card. If all players in the game pass on a card without a bid being made, the card is removed and it will be placed into the discard pile. If players do bid on a card, bidding will continue for as many rounds as it takes for a winner to be found. If a player wins the bid but does not have the cards to pay what they bid, they will be penalized. There are two ways to penalize a player. The penalization method should be chosen before the game starts. The first way to penalize a player is for all players in the game to randomly pick one of the penalized player's cards. Each player will add the randomly drawn card to their hand. The card the penalized player could not pay for is then auctioned again, and the penalized player is not allowed to bid. The second way to be penalized is for the player to the left of the penalized player to randomly draw one of their cards. The penalized player's card will be discarded, and the auction card will be auctioned again, and the penalized player is not allowed to bid. There are two main types of cards that can be drawn during an auction, and each type will be auctioned in a different way. If the card to be auctioned is a gold card, players will bid by announcing the number of cards they are willing to pay for that gold card. It does not matter what type of cards the player offers. If they win the bid, they will remove the cards from their hand and place them face down into the discard pile, and they will gain the auction card into their hand. If the card being auctioned is any other type of card in the game, the players will announce how much gold they are willing to pay. A player may offer any combination of their gold cards in exchange for the card. No change is given when a player bids. Whenever a player pays for a card with gold, they will show all other players the gold they are paying with and then place the cards in the discard pile. And then they will take the card for their hand. After the player currently holding the auction pile has auctioned off their card, they will pass the deck to the player to their left. That player will draw the top card place it face up in the middle of the playing area, and the next auction will begin. The auction phase continues until all cards in the auction pile have been either auctioned to a player or discarded. The game ends after all of the cards from the auction phase have been auctioned. Now each player will determine the points they gain during the game. To do this, players will look at the cards remaining in their hand. They will sort the cards they collected during the game by color, then they will add up the points they have in each color by counting the number in the top left corner of each card. The player with the highest points in a color wins the points shown on the die of that color and will take the die and place it in their player area. If there is a tie for the most points in any category, the tied players will look to the bottom right corner of their cards of that color. The player with the card closest to the letter A in that category will win the points. After each player gains any die that they've earned during the game, they will count up the total value of their die. The player who ends the game with the most total victory points is the winner. If two or more players are tied for the most points, the tied player with the most remaining gold in their hand is the winner. If there is still a tie after taking money into consideration, the tied players will count up their total points in the brown monk cards. The player with the most points in this card type is the winner. And if they are tied, they will once again look to the bottom right corner, and the player with the card closest to A will be the winner. In the event that a tie still occurs after taking the monk cards into consideration, they will move down the line, and the tiebreaker will be the most pigment cards. They will go as far as needed down the line until a winner is declared.